I'm Jonathan Green. Welcome to this week's Car File. Now, so far in the series, we've looked at several different genres of cars, whether it be small, practical city cars, sporty roadsters, or big money 4x4s. All of them very different, but whether you subscribe to the image thing or not, all of them say something about their driver. Big 4x4s can shout power and wealth. Roadsters can say, I'm reliving my youth. Luxury cars say, I'm a high roller. And some cars say, well, I don't care what I drive. And it's image cars that we're looking at today. Three very different vehicles. In the zany corner, we've got the smart Cabriolet. It's cute, it's wacky, it's fuel efficient, and you can mix and match the panels just like a Lego set. For the gadget freaks, we've got the Audi A2. It's an aluminium mini MPV built with all the luxury of a 50 grand luxury car. And while it costs the same as a saloon, it's the perfect accessory for your new mobile phone or that shiny new laptop. And in the fun corner, we've got the VW Beetle. It's curvy, it's cuddly. And if someone cut you up on the way to work, well, you'd still smile. Oh, and it also comes with a flower. So let's start by getting smart and serious with the A2, because let's face it, smart and serious is Audi through and through. Audi had already proven that aluminium was superb material for building cars with their A8. However, aluminium may be light and strong, but it's very expensive to work with. Now that's fine when you're building a car that will cost 50 grand, but could they build a small, fuel-efficient car out of aluminium that would still have the same quality as the rest of the Audi range and show other manufacturers that Audi were the world's leaders in design and technology? Well, the A2 was the answer to that challenge, built more to show the directors of VW what Audi could do rather than feed popular demand. And with a price tag of 14 grand, this Super Mini certainly isn't cheap. And UK sales of 1,000 in the first year and 32,000 worldwide reflect its exclusivity. To look at, the A2 is a vehicle that even sci-fi gurus such as Zemeckis and Spielberg led us to believe we would all be driving in the 21st century. With its attractive looks and tight lines, the Audi definitely makes its mark. It's like nothing else on the road. The A2 perhaps is a little ahead of its time, or maybe Audi have got their finger right on the pulse. My first impressions of the Audi A2 are that its layout and design from the inside point of view is very similar to a lot of its elder brothers. Even though the price of this car is a lot cheaper, you get all the functionality of, let's say, the Audi A4, A6 or A8. I think I actually prefer the inside of this car to the outside of this car. The styling on the outside, fine, might be a bit space age, but on the inside it's nice and functional, neat and tidy is the best description I can give it. All the panels and all the observation points are very easy to see. It also has all the functions of the other Audis, like adjustable seats, adjustable steering, electric windows, all the things you'd expect from quite a nice classy setup of the A2. The drive and handling of the car is nice and responsive as you'd expect from Audi. The 110 brake horsepower engine is nice and punchy, but you won't pay a penalty at the pumps. 47.6 miles to the gallon. That's not bad, especially in town. And I think that's the place that you'd use this car. I think you could get away with cruising down the motorway on it for hour upon end, but it really comes into its own around the twisty streets of a city like this. Overall, the A2 is a good image car for what it is. It's not overly spectacular, it's nice and functional, and it does what it does, and what it's supposed to do. How do you come up with a cheap version of a lot of good things about the more expensive versions of its car? Put them all in a nice tight package and made it into a very user-friendly, nice MPV. So just under the 14 grand mark, the Audi A2 FSI might seem an expensive MPV. But what we must remember is that whilst it is a mini MPV, it still has all the cachet and quality of every other Audi in the range. With an 0-60 time of around 9.8 seconds and a speed of 126 miles per hour, you get a lot of bang for your bucks. And as we mentioned before, you do get a degree of exclusivity with the A2, with not many driving around on the roads. The A2 is chic, powerful and really looks the business. It wouldn't look out of place darting through the city traffic or cruising the highways of the south of France. And that's in complete contrast to our next image conscious car, the Smart Cabriolet. At around three grand cheaper than the A2, the Smart has a character and charm all of its own. 
This little number is at the pinnacle of compact motoring. It's got buckets of style and some very impressive stats to boot. Well, at least that's what the booklet says. I'm not entirely convinced. This car has to be all about image. What else could it be about? It's too small to be practical. Not only could you not swing a cat inside the smart, your cat wouldn't fit in there. I may be being a bit too hard on this diminutive automobile. Does small always mean cheap and nasty? What do you make to this colour? Should any car have to have this kind of paintwork? Well, if you don't like it, you don't have to get a respray or buy a new one. You simply change the panels. Swap your panels? What's all that about? And they're made of old washing-up bottles and those missing pen lids. OK, the smart must play more of a role in life than being an image thing. It must have its own place in the 21st century. No, not there. In this day and age of fast living and everything getting smaller, maybe, just maybe, this is the right time for this car. I mean, can 4,303 people all be wrong? Now back to those statistics I told you about. The Smart has a 600cc engine, an excellent fuel economy, 57.6 mpg, which means that filling up will be a bit of a novelty rather than a full-time job. The car's best use is around town, nipping in and out of traffic and squeezing into the tightest of parking spaces. And so to the roof. It's OK, it's not bad, it's average, it works, it comes off. But now I find myself thinking warm thoughts. Is it possible I'm starting to have feelings for this car? Has its style and image conscious looks changed my mind about it? I have to be honest, when I first saw the Smart Cabriolet, I thought it would be an awful drive. I mean, it is the proverbial roller skate on wheels, but it doesn't feel that way once you get inside and start driving it. It handles quite well and actually feels a lot bigger than it really is. It drives more like some of its bigger counterparts and is quite a comfortable drive to sit in as well as drive along in. The real problem is its gear shift. It's cumbersome to say the least. And in fact, as you can see, takes its time to get through the sequential gearbox. Now, once you get used to it, well, OK, it is actually easier and easier. There is no clutch, so you can just come up through the gears with a touch of a button. But I think most people are used to either using a clutch or an automatic, and the combination of not one or the other is a little bit confusing. With a wheelbase the size of a go-kart, you'd think once again that it would handle probably something similar. But actually, it handles quite well when it goes around the corners. It doesn't roll as you'd expect and you would be a little bit concerned, especially with a light convertible like this, that it wouldn't get round the corners. But it grips quite nicely, especially in a roundabout like we're in now. And then accelerates away through the beer box once you're used to it and away you go. But this is a fun car. You're not thinking about the drivability of it when you're in this. It's image. It's all totally image, this. You want to be looked at. You want people to say, hey, what's he driving? When you buy a car like this, you've got to ask the question, why am I buying it? And it is all image, what you look like in it. Perhaps its biggest feature is the fact that it is great for round town. You can weave in and out of traffic, and certainly parking isn't going to be a problem. But those are practicalities of the car. You're not really looking for real handling from this car. What you're looking for is something nippy and pacey. But the real plus, of course, is its fuel consumption. It really is fantastic. You won't be going to the petrol station much. And in fact, with almost 50 miles to the gallon, you'll be having a ball with this without ever worrying having to fill it up. To sum it up, there's no question about it. This is the ultimate image car. But the question is, what is the image you're trying to portray? If you're a minimalist and you want to say, I want to be dare to be different here today, well, then this is the car for you. The Smart may be small, but it has a large presence. With an excellent fuel economy and a surprisingly high top speed, the Smart Cabriolet certainly has its niche in today's market. And you'd never mistake Smart for something else on the road. It's relatively cheap to buy and extremely cheap to run. And parking-wise, you'll never have a problem. Just don't try moving your house in it. This is a small car, inside and out. You know... I don't actually hate this car. In fact, it's a lot of fun when you're weaving in and out of traffic downtown. The biggest downside is the gearbox. It really is frustrating when you're trying to shift along. But if everybody had one of these, I think road rage would be a thing of the past. So, two very distinctive cars with very different drives. And after the break, we'll be getting into the driving seat of the new revamped love bug, the Beetle 1.8T. And we'll also be looking at our alternative image car, the Renault Valsettus. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi and welcome back to Car Fire, where this week we're looking at image cars. We've already seen the A2 FSI and the Smart Cabriolet. Well, next on the bill, it's the car that never made it into the Fab Four, but perhaps it should have done. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the VW Beetle. <laughs> This is the 1.8 T Beetle, and like all others, it's got tons of style and bags of charisma. It's cute and cuddly, and like the smart car, you could never really get annoyed at someone driving a Beetle. But that's not to say that this car is tame, as it shares the same engine as the 1.8 Golf GTI, and that's a stonking car. It's been mentioned that the new Beetle is aimed at the fairer sex, and that the overall styling is not so much muscle as lipstick. Personally, I can't see it myself. It's safe to say, however, that retro styling gets a big thumbs up from the motoring world and you'll find it hard not to fall in love with its lines and curves. Certainly the most recognisable car in our test today, the Beetle is a real head-turner and with the introduction of a convertible in 2003, I'm sure it's going to live on. Space-wise, the Beetle is excellent. There's loads of it, especially in the front here, and loads of headroom as well. Perhaps it's the back that's a little bit of a squeeze. It'd be a bit of a trouble trying to get two adults in the back. You'd be better off with two kids. But really, this is image, remember, and you're not really talking about a family car to go on holiday with. This is a fun car to get around with. And sure, you might go to the beach, but you'd do it, well, you'd do it with a squeeze, that's all. And there certainly wouldn't be a lot of room for baggage. Boot space will be a problem in the VW, but Again, as I said, it's an image car. You're not really looking for practicality from a car like this. In comparison to our other two cars, the Audi and the Smart, you'd have to say that functionality, it hasn't got that that the Audi has, but it's a lot more fun than both the Audi and the Smart. And in terms of its drive, well, it's better than both. The Audi does drive well, but this is different. This has got a lot more response, a lot more kick to it. You feel as though you're really enjoying the drive. I think that's the biggest thing that comes across when you're driving this particular car, is that it's easy to drive, especially around town. You don't feel anything going through the gears. It's not a hassle, it's not hard work. It really is quite a fun, enjoyable drive, but that's what it's meant to be. This is to get you around, have fun, go out, and not even think about the driving experience. To sum it up, I'd say that this is the ultimate image car. It screams, look at me, I'm having fun, I'm having a good time. What are you miserable people doing out there on the roadway when you should be having one of these? It may not have 52 stuck on the side of it, but it says, hey, I'm Herbie, and I'm definitely off to Monte Carlo. With the ultimate retro styling, the Beetle harks back to the days gone by. This new version picks up the mantle from its predecessor. Beetle makes up for average statistics with its cheeky, quirky charms. Whilst the ride isn't going to set the motoring world on fire, it's sure-footed and handles reasonably well, and it feels quicker than those figures suggest. Other than those looks, the best feature of the Beetle is its build quality, which is as good as any car wearing the VW badge. I love the old Beetle, the style, the smell, and even the noise, and I was a bit worried that this new Beetle wouldn't live up to expectations. Well, how wrong could I be? Even though it's been around for a while, this is a very exciting motor car and great to run around town in. And I'd say it's certainly one of the cheekiest cars on the market. So that's our three cars tried and tested, and at the end of the programme, we'll be giving you the scores. But now let's take a look at our special, the Renault Vel Satis. Hmm, the Vel Satis, what exactly is it? Is it a saloon or an MPV? Well, I'm sure the people at Renault aren't entirely sure, as you can tell from the design of the car. It's big, it's tall, it's wide, and it tries to disguise itself with some rather interesting lines. I can't decide whether this car is futuristic or retro. Yeah, it's got some nice touches to it, things which make it stand out from the crowd. Yes, I know we've said it's an image car, but what image is it trying to portray? To me, Renault are being typically French with this car, asking too many questions and not giving enough answers. From certain angles, this car looks new and fresh, and from others, it looks dull and incoherent. The cabin itself is lavish. It looks futuristic, with some very nice design features, like this elegantly styled clock, and small details that are lovingly repeated throughout the cabin. The only downside to this lavish interior are these very unsupporting seats. Sumptuous they may look, 
But take a corner at more than 50 miles per hour and you'll find yourself sliding around the cockpit. It hasn't quite got the X factor, but there is something here. But I really don't know how to find it. For a car that doesn't know what it is, the Velsatis must be an image car. And with a price tag that's just over 30 grand, unfortunately, the image is not strong enough. Well, if we couldn't decide what kind of car this was from the outside, once you get inside, it's very obvious indeed. This is without doubt an exec car and in fact has a lot of the touches you'd find in the Lexus, BMW or the Mercedes. But in fact on some cases it's actually gone a little step further. The veneer in the front is even nicer than some of those cars I've just mentioned and well thought out too and well designed. This is a nice car from the inside and a comfortable ride. The dash is beautifully laid out, meticulous and functional, but if there is a problem, it's in the stereo. It once again fits nicely into the dash, but can you use it? The buttons are so small that you'd never get your head round it, and by the time you fiddle with them all, you're into the back of the car in front of you. I keep wondering why it's an image car. From the inside, it's definitely a luxury exec car. From the outside, well, that's its problem. It's definitely not quite decided what it is. I think it's got an identity crisis of sorts, but maybe that's its state of origin. It's something about the French, some soi de vivre, some sacre bleu. Qu'est-ce que c'est? I don't know. Do you? It's got a big V6 and there's plenty of punch underneath the bonnet, but whether you'd actually be wanting to use it because the rest of the car doesn't handle in respect of that kind of power. You want to take it easy. If you do take it easy, it rewards you. If you try and muscle it around corners or punch it too hard, then you're not going to have a good driving time. We're talking image cars, and if you've got to put a name on the image that the Renault is trying to be, well, it's the kind of car that sort of says, I don't care what you think of me. I'm comfortable, I'm having a good time, I know where I am, and I don't care what I look like from the outside. It's sort of like, you know, stepping out to the pub in a tracksuit with your best shoes on. I may have been a little harsh on the Renault. It is a beautifully put together car, very strong, and you feel comfortable all the time that you're in it. You really could drive for hours without a problem in a car like this. And I think it's well designed and the people at Renault should be proud of the interior of this car, although the exterior does let it down. As an image car, well, you have to say, je ne sais quoi. As an image car, the Velsatis doesn't live up to expectations. Yes, it looks different, but in this day and age, is that enough to class this as an image car? OK, it does 0 to 60 in 8.3 seconds and has a top whack of 147 miles per hour. But it's presented in a package that disappoints. This car has left me wanting more. The overall image lacks the charm of the Beetle, the size of the Smart and the overall panache of the Audi A2. Overall, I'm fairly disappointed with this car. Well, if you haven't seen the image car to suit your image, then here's three alternatives that may tempt you to change it. In third place is the Mini 1.6 16 valve. Like the Beetle, this retro classic is back on our roads. Made by the people at BMW, the Mini has quickly become known as the Baby Beamer. An instant hit with today's style-conscious motorists, the Mini may have grown in size, but it can definitely handle its new stature with all the fun and excitement of the original. Pip to the post this week is the Renault Avantime 3 litre 24 valve privilege. The looks of this car may not be everyone's cup of tea, but its beautifully tuned V6 power plant, you couldn't ask for a smoother performance. This car is ideal for long distance driving, and take it from me, even at higher speeds, this car will turn heads. And in first place this week is the Chrysler PT Cruiser 2 litre classic. With its aggressive hot rod image, the PT Cruiser is the daddy of the MPV market. Chrysler were not afraid of using this strong looking image to lure buyers away from the more standard looking MPVs. With this car, the American giants have cleverly placed their cruiser on the driveways of an ever growing image aware British public. There's plenty of image cars on the market, but for now we're just concerned with R3 as it's crunch time for the Audi A2, the Smart Cabriolet and the VW Beetle as we take a look at how they scored in our car file test. First up, it's practicality and for this the Audi scores four points. It's deceptively roomy and has a surprisingly large amount of luggage space in the back. The Smart, on the other hand, gets two and a half points. Although it's the easiest car on the market to negotiate around, it has poor luggage space and can only carry two people. And the Beetle gets three points here, but it's cramped back there and it wouldn't suit a basketball team. On to style, and here the Audi scores three points. 
It is a clever design, it's handsome, but it's understated like most Audis. And next to our other two cars, it certainly seems tame. The Beetle and the Smart, on the other hand, get three and a half points. Both different, both exciting, and both showing their respective manufacturers weren't afraid to take a risk when it comes to car design. Next up is performance, and here the Audi gets three points. That impressive 1.6 engine, math to the lightweight aluminium design, makes for a rapid pace and great fuel economy. The Smart gets two points here. Though it's got great fuel economy, it takes an age to get to 60 and tops out at just 84 miles per hour. Highest marks go to the V-Dub for performance. It's quick, both to 60 and top speed, and has a reasonable fuel return of 34 to the gallon. Next up, it's handling, and once again, the Beetle scores highest, three and a half points. The Audi gets three points here. It is a comfortable ride, especially on the motorway, but it can become unsettled when pushed and when driving on an uneven road surface. And the Smart, built for show, not for go with this one. If you don't drive it quickly, it's fine, but hurry it and the ride is skittish, unstable and always feels like it's about to tip over. And finally, it's value for money. Here the Audi gets 2.5 points. Though it's well built and has an Audi badge on it, it's fiercely expensive for the Mini MPV and is high insurance group for this kind of car. The Smart gets two points. When you look at what you get for your 10 grand, it is very expensive. The saving grace though is they appear to be holding their value at the moment. And last up, the Beetle. Being a VW, it will hold its value well and won't fall apart after a few years. But running costs are not the cheapest, with higher insurance and servicing costs than most. So for the total scores, the Audi gets 15 and a half points, the Smart gets 12 points, and the Beetle gets 16 and a half points, making the Beetle this week's winner. It's a close one between the Beetle and the Audi, but for a car that's going to look good and stay stylish, I think the Beetle is the one that's going to stand the test of time whereas the Audi and the Smart are really probably going to end up as quirky museum pieces. I'm Jonathan Green, thanks for watching this week's Car File.